Welcome, Leo, to your Leo May 2021 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James. For those of you who are just stopping by for the first time, welcome and welcome back to the subscribers. Much love and affection to you always. I've had the great pleasure to do some one-on-one -on -one private clairvoyant readings for some Leo men and women over the last month. And you know who you are. And if you would like to have a private one-on-one -on -one personal clairvoyant reading with me, just check out the information that's in the description box below. And you can have one from wherever you happen to be living in the world. But now, let's draw five cards because that's all we need. Because each of the cards is jam-packed full of information for you. So let's see what there is. You're coming out wherever you happen to be. There's the Seven of Swords. There's the Empress. This is the Five of Swords. A few Swords cards there for you. There's the Lovers Major Arcana. And what might there be finally? You look like you're poking out whoever you happen to be, so we'll see who it is. Oh, that's a nice uh, card. That is the Prince of Swords. So, lots of swords, which is good. Get that great mind of yours in exercising. Now, just come and sit down next to me and we'll have a look at the artwork on these cards together while I do the reading for you. Now, I'm having a very spiritual response to these cards. So let's have a look at this one first, which is the lovers. Always an interesting message somewhere, particularly for you down there underneath this Seven of Swords. Now let me have a look at it. We'll look at the symbology of it because the symbology will tell us a lot about what it means. Well, with this painting, you see the Archangel Raphael, healer of light, who opens your heart to light, to healing and higher consciousness. He represents the healing of your mind, body and spirit through the light of unconditional love of God. Now the sun represents the light of the divine, the, what do you call that bird there, the, the dove. Um, that represents the Holy Ghost, the spirit, the spirit of God descending with the light of peace that comes from healing and true self-love. Now the man and woman face each other with love, devotion and commitment of the sacred marriage to each other as well as the sacred marriage within the self. Now the apple tree that's here next to the, the, um, the woman that represents the tree of knowledge of good and evil from that Hebrew or Old Testament book of Genesis. The golden tree to the right of the man. That represents the tree of life. Now the tree's roots intertwine in the starry pool of possibility in the shape of a heart. Can you see that there? Combining, I think, both aspects of the trees. And above the heart is a six-pointed star created from the union of a fire triangle, masculine, spirit, consciousness, fire, and a water triangle, feminine, emotion, unconsciousness, water, symbolizing creation and transformation at a very sacred level. Now the grail that you see here, well that symbolizes the feminine, the garden of receptivity flowing with love into the pool of all possibilities and the sword which you might be able to make out going through this grail. That is the masculine aspect, bringing thought and imagination into action. The double-edged sword defines your needs and choices that you make in life. Now the butterflies flitting about, they represent the beauty of transformation that comes from healing and self-love. The lilies which are here represent purity and unconditional love. Now Gemini is the astrological energy of this 
seen here, and that symbolizes the twins, dualities, and communications. The twins embody the yin, yang, that feminine, masculine principle, light, dark, the known, the unknown. And Gemini's key words are, I think. Now, if we, we take that symbology that's there and put it into some sort of a context, everybody has experienced the feeling of love on some level, the feeling of walking on air, the initial infatuation. Everything around you seems brighter, more alive, more connected. Passion is high. Well, the lovers symbolize this feeling, but it goes much deeper. It represents a committed relationship. The lovers represents a strong partnership that is genuine and harmonious, bringing trust and spiritual strength, surrendering their hearts to each other without fear. And their relationship expands and stretches the physical and spiritual self to connect at a deep and unexpected place of the heart and the soul. The lovers symbolize a committed, strong relationship, which could be in business, it could be social, but it could also be romantic, that keeps growing and spiritually expanding towards a deeper understanding of your inner self, your partner, and your relationships in the outer world. It awakens your free will to make choices in life that support your heart's evolution on your spiritual path. Now this energy asks, are the choices you make in relationships coming from a balanced, integrated place? And if not, identify the opposing aspects within yourself and perhaps ask what you can do to bring about balance. Internal struggles between your dualities can create negativity that projects outwards. Addressing your inner conflict, balancing of dualities, trusting and loving yourself can heal the struggles from the past. Understanding your dualities and how they work within you. Enable your energies to be utilized and your outer world opens up to your creativity and personal power. Now this energy at this time for you this month is a signal that it is a time for choices and decisions to be made. The gifts of this energy are peace harmony, beauty, love, and trust. It indicates a deepening relationship. It also can indicate a marriage, and certainly a strong bond between two people. Let's have a look at the Seven of Swords. Yeah, I get a real real out of world response to these images I have to say well that's a that's a good image isn't it here we have a the white stag and it is calling you to a spiritual quest now in mythology the stag is seen as a magical creature who leads you to your destiny the color white reflects peace, love, purity, and the cleansing of your soul. The stars that are in the background here, they represent clarity and dreams that can be achieved. The two swords that are standing upright, you see them there? Well, one sword represents wisdom, I think, the other, the heart. And the pool of water that's down here, you can see the reflection and things in the water there. That represents your subconscious. The boulders along the shoreline represent outdated thought patterns, beliefs, known to you or repressed within you that can impede your progress towards the light. The sword that plunges into the water 
symbolizes the will to take action. The four swords in the pool represent the struggles and confusion that needs to be sorted out. The fish is stirring in the waters of the subconscious, allowing new and creative insights to come to the surface. And the green lilies, which are dotted over the water there, floating on the surface, they are flashes of intuition that draw your eyes downward so that you may gaze through a mirror into the hidden part of yourself. Now, this energy here, I think, is... It brings new thought patterns that challenge the old parts of yourself. The inner shift causes mental resistance and maybe some degree of internal unrest. The transformation of your self, though, has already begun. Acceptance and surrender to the change will allow you to unite with your new aspect, bringing heightened spiritual awareness and opportunity to regain your mental strength and inner intuitiveness to review any challenges or conflicts in a new life. And thus, you'll be able to discover creative solutions, freeing you from struggle. Now, if your thoughts are scattered and you feel as though you are standing on shaky ground, this energy brings clarity to cut through confusion and futility, guiding you through fear and limitations to a place of stability and balance. Conflicts will soon dissipate into the night of spiritual wisdom and mental courage. Now this Seven of Swords moves you to take the righteous path in the face of diversity. Whatever obstacles you face require your mind to act in union with your heart. This energy brings a time out, a rest to reflect on what is important to you? What dreams and desires do you want to put into action? When there is confusion, dig deep within before you act. You are living and creating your karma every day with your choices and actions. Now let's continue. Down this diagonal, I think, down here, and look at this card. This, five. Another mental, intellectual sort of energy that's around here. Well, the painting of the Five of Swords, well, the background is split in half, showing the dualities of your light and dark energies. The unconscious and conscious self. The patterns of hearts, they are the emotions, and swords are the intellect. And they appear to be in conflict, which symbolizes the inner struggle of the self trying to sort out confusion and conflict. The cross, I think, that we see here, that represents your unfoldment in the physical realm, bringing challenge and potential to live a full life of stretching, growing and creating. The cross suggests faith, transcendence and healing, as well as balance between the spiritual and material realms. Now this green star that's in the center there, that depicts your physical being and free choice to create what you want in this world. The heart is, though, being pierced by five swords. The swords form an upside-down star, bringing unrest, fear, uncertainty. The battered swords indicate struggle between the four elements of the physical self with the spiritual self. Each sword has a colored handle, doesn't it? Yellow, air, swords, intellect, red, 
Fire, wands, will, blue, water, cups, emotions, and green, earth, pentacles, physical, and white, spirit connected to the divine. Now, I'm going to give it to you straight because this card has appeared here in this center message, in the center point here, because there's obviously a message to be delivered to you. This is not a sentence, but this is something that you need to be aware of so that you can deal with it. Because this Five of Swords can bring many levels of negative energy that need to be addressed, cleansed and healed it can place you in unfortunate circumstances, putting you in a difficult and challenging position. And you can, as a result, see the ugliness in life and the ugliness in personality. Things like cruelty, hostility, betrayal, dishonesty, speaking ill of people, quarrels, jealousy, abuse. There some of the expressions of the Five of Swords, I think, when it stirs up demons, perhaps your demons. Now, either you become a victim of your life circumstances or your repressed fears and pain push you to treat another unjustly. Others become victims sometimes to our dark words and actions falsely empowering us and disempowering them. And of course, you can go either way. It is a vicious circle that needs to stop. Now, metaphorically, the soul, heart, intellect, and body suffer as you kind of fall from grace. With the Five of Swords, we can see the shadow personality being activated, bringing up some unpleasant aspects of ourselves that have been ignored or suppressed. What you resist is fighting to be reckoned with and healed. Do you know, misfortunes in life bring an, uh, an awakening that change and transform stuck energy into new energy of growth. This is a time, I think, when what you need to do is to just take a deep breath and prepare yourself. This can signal the power struggle between the ego and the heart. And maybe there's a defeat occurring on both sides. Communication with others can be poor, resulting in conflicts. Relationships can hit rocky shores. You might be feeling that you're being victimized in a particular situation or helpless. The Five of Swords, I think, for you coming here like this calls for a reconnection to your higher values and morals of soul self, repairing the bridge between the mind and heart taming the ego. It's time to take the steps to begin shifting and cleansing negative energies, opening yourself to healing by looking deeply at who you really are and who you are not. You are constantly creating and recreating your karma. Well, here he is, the Prince of Swords. We have this diagonal of swords here. What do you have to tell me, old boy? What do you have to say at the moment? Let's have a look here. And again, let's look at the symbology. Well, he stands in the whirling north wind, holding his sword of destiny. The north wind symbolizes the power of air. The double-edged sword symbolizes truth that can cut both ways. It also symbolizes opposite ideas or solutions and the balance between spirit and matter. 
Now the, the new moon in the clouds, that, that signals that a new quest for you is at hand. You see these two ravens here flying in the sky? Well, they, they're taken, I think, from North mythology, Hugen being thought and Munin being memory. In Nordic mythology, the ravens belonged to the king of the Norse gods, Odin, who was the seeker of wisdom. Well, here, they are the prince's spirit guides. Now, the prince's red cloak flaps and twirls in the winds. Red is the color of adventure, aggression, violence, action, bravery, and courage. All the aspects of the cloak are being tested, experienced, and balanced as the prince begins to interact his intellect in the physical journey of life. Now the color purple weaves its way through the cloak, giving it magical qualities of spirituality, wisdom, inner peace, and mastery. These swirling stars that are here, they symbolize the prince's inherent memory of his personal power and guiding light that is constant. And these moths floating around here, they symbolize a heightened spiritual awareness that gravitates towards the truth, guiding you through the dark hours in your life. And in this wheel that appears to be here, there is a four-path star dividing the different strengths the prince carries on his journeys. Green is healing, black the unknown, yellow intuition and creativity, and blue perception, wisdom and peace. Now I think why he's coming to you at the end of this line, as I see it here, intuitively, psychically, is that the prince's challenge is to remain true to himself while experiencing and dealing with the events of his life. His brilliant mind and your brilliant mind can get distracted and scrambled if he allows himself to fall away from his true path. The prince needs to remember that he is a student of life, living in the classroom of the world, developing and integrating his intellect, maturity and purpose. The Prince of Swords elements are air and he's in air. His task is to bring his intellectual truth down to earth and ground his ideas and manifest them. Air breathes in new intellect and ideas into the earth plane, bringing change and evolution. Earth helps ground and stabilize the magical, airy mind into the world of matter. Now, the Prince of Swords brings with him messages to you, I think, news, new ideas, unexpected information or surprises. He presents you with written communications, with new friends, maybe even travel. A new intellectual endeavor or project can present itself. His energy can quickly change anticipated plans. The prince can indicate a sudden change that brings a whole new way of life. He indicates a time when you need to communicate clearly. Anything involving signing contracts or important documents needs to be scrutinized when the prince comes here. Ethical behavior and truthfulness are at the forefront. Secrets are revealed. He is adamant that you find your true self and live by it. The Prince of Swords bring challenges that create an opportunity for you, for healing and for growth. Well, let's have a look at this young woman here. 
and see what she has to tell us, shall we? Oh, my darling, what do you have to tell us today? She says, first, look at my symbols, because they will tell you everything that you need to know. Well, we shall see. Well, you may see a necklace around the, the neck of the, um, the Empress, and it contains the nine planets of the solar system. Now, the bottom symbol on, of the necklace is the planet Venus. Her crown is a 12-petaled lotus. Each petal has a heart of love and passion as an, and is topped by a star representing combined wisdom of the 12 zodiac symbols. Now, the roses in her hair and on her uh, gown represent her passion for living life to the fullest, but in a balanced way, creating and exploring the imagination. She is pregnant with, well, with, with the spiraling energy of life and creativity, birthing them into the world. She wears the Milky Way of her, on her dress, symbolizing mother's milk to nourish the earth and all her creatures. Now the Empress is surrounded by, I can see here, five birds. Birds are the messengers of spirit. Um, let's have a look and see where we are. First of all, let's have a look at this one up here. There's the eagle. Well, the eagle represents the messenger from the divine, connecting her to the light of the universe, carrying the power and wisdom of the spirit in, in the star. The swan that we see down here represents the beauty and transformation. The dove that we see here, well, represents the spirit of deep love and wisdom and inner peace. Now, out here, there's a little, you may not see it, but there's a little tiny hummingbird representing the spirit of spreading love and joy to all. And one of Venus's birds is the sparrow and it sits on her shoulder. It sends her knowledge learned from past experiences. What else is there here? Well, a deer. The deer represents her love, compassion and gentleness. And these nature spirits that are asleep here, well, I think what they do, they symbolize trust and security in their mother's world. The nature spirits are dedicated to the balance and care of earth and her creatures, plants and environment. Now, there's a turtle down here. You can probably see that. What would I say of that turtle? It represents, it is the mother symbol and on her shell is the spiral of the triple goddess. Now the lilies and lotuses that are around there, they are feminine beauty combined with strength, clarity of mind and spirit. The two crescent moons mm, represent the wa waxing and waning of the moon cycles and the cycle of yourself. The full moon, which is sitting there behind her, symbolizes illumination. The wheat and the fields symbolize the harvest of your life. The golden apples on the apple tree here, they, they are the gifts or harvest of a full life. And the pomegranates on this side here, they symbolize fertility in all creations. Now, her astrological aspect is Venus, the wishing star, symbolizing emotions, love, passion, imagination, the arts, and music. And in summary, she speaks to you of a verdant, fruitful, enjoyable life, full of abundance, prosperity now moving into you, and a time when finally you feel that things are moving ahead. She was true. The symbology did tell it all. That's the way it is for you this month. Well, I, uh, I really enjoyed doing that for you. 
I'm glad we had the chance to do that. It was really interesting, I thought. Did you? I think it was, uh, I think it's fantastic. I think this is going to be a good month for you. And don't you deserve it? You do deserve it because you've, you always put out so much, so it's time for you to get something back, I think. And um, anyway, until that coming back happens, remember this and remember this always, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.